Hi, Joan. So we're sitting here with Joan Lingal. Joan Sullivan Lingal. That's Lingale. correct. It okay. depends upon the day. It could be Sullivan or O'Sullivan, because it doesn't make one bit of difference. Really? Not... What, should I tell a quick story about sure, that? Sure, sure. Uh, being, I was, I'm Catholic. Uh, when you get married, uh, you have to go get your baptismal certificate. So I go down to St. Francis Xavier on 16th Street, and I go in looking for Joan Sullivan. We don't have a record of Joan Sullivan. Ooh. We're walking out. I said to Tom, I said, let me just check. That day, I was Joan O'Sullivan. And my mother was after my father, make up your mind. Are you going to be Pat Sullivan, or are you going to be Pat O'Sullivan? Because it's signing a lot of legal papers, right? So then I turned into Joan Sullivan. Where where were you born? You want to give us a little bit of no, your I early was, history? No, I was actually, it's funny, uh, like that brochure that I gave when I was first writing my history, uh, I, I was actually in Chelsea. I was born at St. Vincent's Hospital, and Chelsea's on 17th Street. All longshoremen lived there, Irish from Ireland, and that's what my dad was at the time. And uh, But then, afterwards, Chelsea became chic. So anyway, so anyway, I, did, I said, decided that, well, I was born actually in uh, St. Vincent's down in the village. I said, that sounds a little bit better. So I said that I was born in the village, right? Greenwich Village. Then Chelsea became famous and chic. And I said, uh, okay, I can go back to Chelsea now. <laughs> Chelsea is in. Chelsea is in. So it's been Chelsea ever since. Yeah, no, and then, but actually my formative years were in Midtown Manhattan, a place called Murray Hill. Oh, right. I know that name. And as you know, I have a little apartment back there now, right in the shadow of the UN. Very nice. Very exciting. Very exciting, yeah. So now, so you grew up in in Manhattan. How do you feel like that? If, like what you know, what was what was the most memorable thing to you? Because you're an artist. I'm looking all over. There. Well, as you could Very see, visual. it's reflected in my artwork. It's uh, skyscrapers, buildings, architecture. Do you it remember just, yourself looking at that stuff when you were a child? You looked at it, but it wasn't like mentally computing into oh, I'm going to use that in my artwork because I wasn't ready for the art world yet. You know. But then when I wanted to apply whatever skills I had at art, the, uh, as you can see, reflected in my work again, a lot of architecture. Yeah. So, um, okay, so you grew up in Manhattan. You, you lived there until you... Until I got married. And where did you go to school? St. Agnes is on 43rd Street. Uh, we had a Monsignor that was a really, Monsignor Deneen, that was a businessman. And he said, St. Agnes is at the gateway of the world and the home of the helicopter. That's when the Pan Am building had a helicopter poured on top of it. It doesn't exist anymore after a couple of accidents. Oh, oh yeah, it's a Grand Central Station, the lobby of the News Building, the Chrysler Building, the Channon Building. They were, they were my playgrounds. To the city was my playgrounds. And I found that something very interesting about Tudor City. I mean, it was part of my youth, but I didn't know full history of it. That the French, and it was the French company, that it was the first time uh, this architect, this firm, decided to build apartment buildings like skyscrapers. And he did, right there uh, from 20, in 1928, up in 19... Might have been completed around 1930. Uh, there was a total of 11 buildings that he built, and that's called Truda City. And I live in one of those buildings now, and it's on the 19th floor. But oh, I didn't realize they were that big there. You what? I didn't realize the buildings had that many floors there. Oh, yeah. They were, they were called skyscrapers. But they were... Uh, Petitaires, I mean, they was like small units. Yeah. And that Tudor City was my playground also. Have the manager running after all these ragamuffins. Especially back then, we didn't have Thanksgiving. I mean, we didn't have Halloween the way they have it now. We, Tell us a little bit about that, because I have read about Halloween. It's so uh, interesting. Th that 
that uh, we just would get dressed up in whatever we could find around the house. Like, and, you know, and it was, I lived across the street from a building that just had like a lot of single people in it. And evidently this woman was rather social. So she had given us a whole box of evening gowns. Oh, oh. Uh, we were in our glory. And of course, being a child of the movies, you would dress up wanting to feel like Rita Hayward or some famous, you know, movie star, glamorous. There was one girl that she was an only child that did have a Halloween party. That, that was otherwise, and we would just walk through the streets. You didn't go up and knock on doors? Or well, anything? okay, we'd walk through the streets and say anything for Thanksgiving. I That's mean, right, the two holidays were somehow combined, am I right? I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. They were somehow. I remember yeah, we did go out. And now you, yeah, okay, so I ran, because we'd always say anything for Thanksgiving. And then one time, I can remember going through Tudor City with all these apartment uh, apartments and getting off and ringing doorbells, anything for Thanksgiving. And this, there was one family in my building, well, maybe more than one. She was a little toughy. The woman hands her an apple. Well, I don't want to tell you what, how she thought about that apple. <laughs> she wanted money. Fuck but your yeah, apple. they were the good old days. And then I said there was one girl, Rose, Rosemary Altamari, that did have a, a, Halloween, a Halloween party. It was Halloween, yeah. And then we just went there and dug crap. Dug and then where did you go to high school? St. Michael Academy, which was the nuns that, uh, from Ireland. Oh. It, it was called the Presentation Order. And uh, they were the nuns that I had uh, for high school, yeah. And how was that experience with the... With it was there a particular it, emphasis? Like, did you do art in high school? I did have art. I did have art, but I didn't know anything about art. Uh, and then I guess maybe in senior year, there was this girl that sat next to me in one of the classes, and I asked her, you know, probably about where, where, where was she going off to college or whatever. And she said to the, uh, the Art Institute, the one of FIT. Oh. But she knew, I didn't know. My parents were from Ireland. They really weren't attuned to what was going on. Well, where did you meet your husband? I, it, that is so funny, because the firehouse was right on the street where I lived in Manhattan, on East 4th Street. Never even knew it existed. I was very active also in the PAL. That's another thing I was pulled into by the adults. Uh, in that area, to like be part of community organizations, and that that kept me very busy. And uh, I guess one day, I my sister had gotten a dog, and I guess I decided to take the dog for a walk. And that's all the firemen need is to see a young girl walking with a dog. Then I guess I would say they were the older farmers and oh yeah, we know you for years, remember when you were a youngster and I don't know, you know, all right. Oh, from the community organizations? No, no, from just walking back and forth to where I lived. Oh, okay. Because back then, before a lot of the craziness, the firemen were always out on the, on the sidewalk with, you know, with the doors open. But as I said, I was more connected with policemen because I was in the PAL. I was Miss PAL of Manhattan. Wow! Oh, I mean, I was a standout. Are you, gonna, you were Miss PAL, PAL. Was that like a beauty contest, a talent contest? Uh, just all, all over, all around. And what did you have to do to win that? Just be myself. I was just, <laughs> <laughs> I was just selected. They just told me. Did you have to sing, dance? And well, no, I had to go for an interview downtown. I was on the radio. Wow. I represented Manhattan. I didn't win the full title. The girl that That's won not the... a shabby town to represent, though. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. And the girl that won, I said that she won because she was a good ping pong player.
player. She was. No, she was a very nice girl. I mean, I didn't know her or anything. They just selected out of their... Uh, you didn't play ping pong? <laughs> I did. I did, but not expertly, evidently. Okay. I wasn't a stand-down at it. So did, now part of what were some of your duties as Miss PAL? Just being pleasant. Oh. Did you attend events and things? Well, I, I was, as I said, I was pulled into all these community organizations. Okay, so let's go back to finding the firemen, right? Yeah. So they said, uh, oh, well, you know, we have a couple of nice young guys here that we'd like you to meet. I said, oh, okay. So there was a couple of them, and one I did meet, I, I can't remember if I went out with him or not, but it really didn't work. They said, oh, okay, now this is the other guy we have here. He's our Hungarian freedom fighter. I looked down at this guy. He was sitting on a piece of concrete. I said, oh, he's cute. Chemistry immediately. Ah. Immediately had a oh, fabulous smile. And uh, I, I guess it was likewise with him. And that's your husband? That's my husband, yeah. It, that was in June. He did, proposed in August. I says, I hardly even know you when you're asking me to be your wife. And then I had to wait all winter. And let me very quickly tell you. He liked to do his things. I, you know. So St. Patrick's Day Parade, the fire department would march, right? And then they'd go for ham sandwiches afterwards at a church. So I had my girlfriend, I wasn't, you know, nothing was, I was just dating Tom. There's Tom in his uniform, hi Tom, he had a puss. He didn't, he didn't want me there. I said, oh, okay, so then we kind of had a little bit of a, you know, well, let's say a slight falling out. I went home, that was like on the 17th of March and all, didn't hear from him the next day. I said, what the heck with this? I said, I'm going to call him. So I did call him. And we talked and talked and talked. And near the end of the conversation, I said, well, you know, you're really the most important thing to me in my life. And then a little bit later on, he said, okay, I'll be over and pick you up tomorrow. Okay. So he had a car. We uh, took a ride down to 23rd Street in the East River. I said, standing around talking, blah, blah, blah. He said, oh, by the way, the fire department said I have to take my vacation July 2nd. I said, oh, that, you know, that's nice. I said, I'll put in for my vacation. He said, yeah, maybe we could go somewhere together. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't think my mother would approve. Then he said to me, well, what if it was a honeymoon? Ah. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> then we're getting in the car. And I said, I guess we're going steady. He says, you're such a kid. Because in my neighborhood, that's how a romance started. You would go steady, and then you became an item and whatever. So a year later, we were married. And then a year after that, I had my daughter on my first wedding anniversary. Now, my question is, did you ever get to go eat the ham sandwich with them? Or he still didn't want oh, you on that? Oh, no. That was uh, taboo. Sacred. That's sacred. That was like a... A like, man ritual. A, 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 yeah. 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 But, now, so then when you got married, you moved out here immediately? Or no, 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 no. He was, Tom was always very good. He always got everything. There was a fireman that worked with him where his uh, parents were uh, the supers of a building and there was an apartment available. We moved to Kew Gardens. Very nice building. Yeah. Very nice building. And uh, then I, after going up to the park, uh, I met some girls in the park with their children, they're still my friends, uh, and their mother-in-law was a uh, superintendent, and I moved a little bit, a couple of blocks away from there, so that was all in Kew Gardens. And that was a total from 1960 to 1968. Then Tom always liked the open road. He was from upstate New York, foothills of the Adirondacks. And so he'd say, well, let's, what, and I, we had two children by then. Let's go for a ride. Let's go look for strawberry. We'll go strawberry picking. We're on the Sunrise Highway. We're all the way out to Sable. Still no strawberry patches. We didn't know. He sees a sign that says Model Homes. He said, oh, what the heck, you know, you want to take a ride down, look. And this is the house we bought. <laughs> it's very nice. That was... Uh, 
June, and we were living here in October. Oh, they were just building the... Well, no, this was, this was pretty much built up. This was like one of the last couple of lots, and I asked the girl, I, my husband sees the, pl the plan in the garage where the salesman was, and he said, what's that line that, on that property? He says, oh, that's a stream. And Tom always said that uh, he wanted to live, if he ever lived anywhere, he'd like to have a stream on his property. Oh, so that sealed perfect. it. That sealed it. Perfect. Yeah, perfect indeed. Now, so you raised your children here in Sayville. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, Joni was about seven. When you moved here. And Stephen was four. So they went to the, yeah, they went to the local Sable school system. I could say, I said, you know, like somebody else wouldn't want somebody like that. I said, what the heck, this is, Doesn't take away anything from you, right? Not at all. I, they, I mean, I, I, the rest of it was so good, and I ignored the things like that he wanted to shop. And, uh, no, and come home, cook. Very it's, nice. Well, yeah. the firemen usually are good cooks. Well, that's what everybody will say when I tell him that, but his mom, what God bless her, she was from Ireland. And as you know, the, the Irish didn't get very much food. So they, they weren't into the culinary arts. <laughs> so her vision of uh, a meal would be, if she cooked spaghetti, it would be a can of Del Monte tomato sauce. So I think when he was nine years old, he told his mom, Mom, you don't have to cook anymore. I'll cook. <laughs> so then what, when did, when did you decide to go to school? What, uh, how did that come about? Well, the children started to get a little bit older. And you felt like you wanted to do something of your um, own? Well, you know, everybody goes to college, right? Right. I said, I guess I better go to college. And so I you went, went to I took some classes. What kind of classes did you take? Psychology, history, uh, English. No art classes. The art to me was like off on its own. Well, you, now so how about your parents? Your parents were? Uh, well, my father, I have to say, was affected by the War of Independence in, in Ireland. And uh, he... Uh, in fact, uh, that's an interesting story too. There was a uh, copper mine in the village where he was born and raised, and that dried up. And a lot of the people, they had no jobs, they had nothing. British control, they had nothing, absolutely nothing. So a lot of them came to America, and they went out to Butte, Montana hmm. with the copper mines. They, they had those skills. So my dad went out there, and my sister. Mm. Your yeah. mom worked as well? Yeah, she worked at the uh, total of 40 years, I guess we would call it like the Hilton chain of hotels. 40 years on and off, you know, before she married and had a family and then she went back again. Very nice. My wedding reception was there. Uh, yeah, employees could get the, uh, you know, a discount on a, a function. It seems like things... Oh, it was solid. Yeah, yeah, you, you yeah, had what, you, I, got I, what you, dad, you needed. You got what you needed. My dad, he would have me, like as a youngster at the kitchen table, teaching me math, geography, spelling. And of course he taught me a lot of Irish history. I mean, he was really a brilliant man, a, a scholar and a gentleman. But... Uh, in fact, he taught me the Irish National Anthem. And the super in our building in Manhattan was from Ireland. And he'd always say, Joan, sing the National Anthem. Soldiers are we. <laughs> I, like any song I ever learned, I only would know a couple of lines. But it was enough for him. It was a book, The Magic of Main Street Movies. Mary, and what, and tell us a little bit about what that was. Well, I, yeah. I think Tom and I always used to travel through Maine and New England and whatever. And I saw this theater in Burlington, Vermont. It just just caught my eye. And it's like, you know, you get an idea in right. your head. I said, why don't I try to draw that, you know? 
That was the first theater. And then at another time, we'd be coming down, down from upstate, and we'd stop at the light in Little Falls. There's another theater there called the Rialto. And it wasn't open, and you could see it deteriorating. I said, I better grab this before it's gone. Ah. Yeah, and then after that, I just said, I think I'll check out if there's any organizations. And there was one called the Theater Historical Society of America. So I joined that. And every year they would have a conclave. And there would be a committee formed in cities all over the United States and Canada that they would be the host. And we would go visit their theaters. Oh, how cool. So I've been in practically all the states, all the theaters, took photos. You're, and you're constantly getting inspiration. There's one there, uh, that very modern looking one. California? Rose? No, the, no, it's a Vermont one. The Grand. Flynn? Okay. No, the Grand. Okay. And we drive and drive and drive and... Oh, yeah. I'd be in a civilian, if, especially on a Sunday. I'd look down the street to see if I could see a marquee for a theater, right? But Tom being in the fire department would just look for a big red brick building would be a movie theater. But uh, finally, in Maine, they have peninsulas. You could drive all day one way and back, you know, take the whole day. At the end of one of these peninsulas, I found that very modern one called the Grand. I was shocked. Theaters all over. Oh, yeah, Grand. And that was the first time I started to feel the inkling that the theaters were being put out of business. You know, not only by Netflix or other things like that, but like like a big uh, Home Depot or like if there was a store like that near a town, especially in the tip of Maine, the peninsula in Maine, uh, people didn't go into the towns anymore. Hmm. Then as a, um, as a movie reviewer, you visited um, the Golden Globe Awards, was that? I did, yeah. And how was that experience? I went to a couple of them. Oh. In fact, I had a big write-up, uh, if you look under my name on Facebook or something like that, I have a big write-up about my journey, like leaving my house on Regina Drive and landing at the Beverly Hills Hotel in California, meeting all the current stars. That had to be exciting. Well, it is exciting. I know? know you said George Clooney was very gracious, right? Yes, very, very gracious. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Very warm, very warm. And he said something about his mother, right? In the one article you mentioned, he said something about his Oh, mother. that was Gerard Butler, I think. Oh, okay, okay. That, who I met a lot, quite a bit. I he's mean, a favorite of yours. He's a now? favorite, okay. yeah. And I said to him, you know what? I said, any time I've taken a photo with you, you never smile. Here I am talking to the movie star like this. He says, I know. My mother says the same thing. Then I'm thinking about, well, what the heck does he mean by that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but he's a, he's a charmer, absolute charmer, beautiful man. He's the I did get a script. Oh. I said, uh, I was never ready for this. I was too busy doing something. I asked for an autograph, but I don't have a pen or a paper. He said, you have a pen? Do you have a piece of paper? So he had his script from the Golden Globes that he, because he was a presenter. He gives me that. And oh, it. wow. Gee, that's I know, I do have. have it. I do have it, yeah. And I said, and that's another thing. I said, your, your signature, it looks like just lines. <laughs> well, you, I, 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 I could see you doing that, Joan, having been with you in Hot Topics. I know you say what comes to your mind. Which I, is the I, way is that think. what it is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're very frank. Yeah, well... Yeah, why I mean, not? I'm, right. I'm not offensive, you know. It's no, you it's, do it it's with the way charm. I feel. It's the way I feel. And he obviously was charmed by you. Oh, he you've was. Seen him again. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen him. Uh, 
I saw him because I went to see Coriolanus. It was Ray Fiennes' uh, premiere film as a film director. I remember reading that in high school. Ooh. And I went to other, none other than Berlin, Germany for this. Uh, ah. Well, that's a, I love to travel also. And uh, that was fine. That was a big production. You would just uh, Gerard was in it. Jerry was in it. Jerry. Uh, uh, but uh, then when I saw them again, the two of them, they were on the tour promoting the film, was in Toronto. Then I said to uh, Rafe, Rafe, uh, oh, by the way, I saw you in Berlin. And he was a little... I said, when you did the interview with that Hungarian director, he said, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Then my, I was telling my girlfriend this, and my girlfriend says, boy, Jerry was probably impressed with that one. Is she who you traveled with to Germany, or did you and your husband travel? Together? No, my husband only liked to be where he was in control. Okay. <laughs> and that was behind the wheel of a car. <laughs> I traveled back and forth across the United States with him. Okay. By car. By car. By car, yeah. And then, so did you go on trips while he was alive? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. He didn't prevent you from traveling? Not at all. That's wonderful. He never... He never no, I know. It's unbelievable. I should complain. No, you shouldn't. So, so you traveled while he was alive. You traveled... He was taking care of the tomatoes. <laughs> I, I he developed that whole backyard, the whole the stonework, everything. Uh, it's nice that, that you each had your thing that you wanted to do and you didn't get in each other's way about it. I think that's very nice. I, I, I think it's a good thing it worked out that way, you know? Yeah. Because otherwise you wouldn't have had the experiences you had. And he wouldn't have had the tomatoes, right? So... When you got home, did you have a nice tomato sandwich every time? Oh, that's so funny. There was, yeah, what, I don't know where it was. Your last going. trip was the in last Northern trip. Europe. We were Northern Europe, yeah. Germany, we're back to Berlin again. I've been in Berlin quite a few times. See the Brandenburg Gate? It was full of tourists, though. Full of tourists. Packed. Packed. I saw it before the wall went down. I saw it after the wall went down. So you were traveling for a long time then? I always traveled. Hmm. I, went to, I went to Ireland and Paris before I was married. Oh, very nice. With who? A friend? A sister? Oh, no, that's very interesting. I had a girlfriend that her boyfriend was in the army was stationed in Germany. So she was going to go with me. Last minute she backed out. And my mother said, oh, you know, I don't want you to travel. So she let my sister go. So I went with my sister. And we went by ship. The American, on the America, the United States lines, to Ireland. Visited family in Ireland and then got on a plane and went to Paris. I said, I'm in Europe. I mean, where else do I want to go? Travel is good for you, and I can see that it developed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, I was in Alaska. What's your, what was your absolute favorite um, country to visit? Well... I, it's funny, I mean, you can't beat France. I was just in France not too long ago. Like southern France, Bergen, uh, down to, uh, to Marseille. And then I've been thinking about Italy. I was just checking up on Liam Neeson. He just made a film in Italy. And there was something very charming about Italy. And do you speak those languages? Or, no. Or no? But no. you didn't find a problem traveling? No, never had a problem. Never had a problem. And then what about in the United States? Where did you and your husband enjoy going? Oh, well, Tom loved, I mean, like, we'd be here and he'd say, oh, there's going to be a break in the weather in February. We'd go up to Maine. Mm. Go up to Maine. And one of my most romantic evenings was sitting at a, at a bar that we always went to, but it was during the summer months, in the winter with the snow coming down outside. Beautiful. It was just so beautiful. Yeah, just there is something about the winter. 
And then, like, the light was hitting the snow coming down, you know, it's, oh. Very nice. Well, it, it was wonderful for me. Maybe it was that Sam Adams beer that we were drinking. It could have been. <laughs>